Hey guys, I am Foxtrot Delta, and welcome back to some more Space Engineers. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the video you were expecting, maybe you were expecting more Star Trek Legacy, but I did something pretty cool in Space Engineers, and I haven't recorded it for a little bit since my Galore Cruiser unveiling, which I still think looks exceedingly amazing. But I've done something else, I actually completed this project earlier, and I mentioned it briefly, and I was going to show it to you guys, and then, well, school started back up, and I had other things that I have to take care of, but right now I do have time to showcase something pretty cool, and the reason why I think this is so neat is because this is what I'm interested in, this is what I'm, I'm currently studying, uh, this sort of stuff. And what I did was, even before I made the Glore class, I programmed my own guided missiles in Space Engineers using C-sharp scripts. Uh, I had never before programmed in C-sharp. I'd programmed in C++ before, I'd programmed in Java, but I have never touched C-sharp before a few months ago in Space Engineers. And my first attempt at making scripts was a systems diagnostic and tactical display screen for one of my larger cruisers, and it actually worked really well, and I thought, well, one thing that people use scripts for, and that they're really useful for, are things like guided missiles. Uh, because you can't do that without some kind of a script. And I know there are scripts on the workshop for uh, your own guided missiles, you can just put them into whatever grid you're using, and then boom, you have a guided missile programmed by somebody else. But I wanted to know how it worked. And I know for a fact, 3,000%, that my way of doing it is one of the less, maybe even the least efficient ways of accomplishing it. But I do think it is still really cool, and it does work. So this is the ship that I am using. Uh, here are the missiles right here, these small little things on the wings. This actually comes from... hold on. I know I'm talking a lot and not explaining much. If we go to one of my earlier vessels, uh, light bomber. Here we go. Nope. No. Ah, yes. This is the original version. I originally designed this ship as a, an unguided missile fighter. You would just start heading towards a slow-moving cruiser or a space station or some sort of base on the moon and release these missiles and they do work so we arm one fire one and one is away it has three ion thrusters and it does not go that fast it doesn't accelerate that quickly which is why usually i'd launch them while my ship was already moving but after a few seconds or only 500 meters out it's moving along at a pretty nice clip and i think the max speed i have is 300 meters per second, which is pretty darn fast, so that thing will get up to speed relatively quickly. But it wasn't very effective, and it was hard to hit things, so uh, my next design improvement... Well, I, I'm not even sure if I still have the blueprint. I can't remember, I've made so many revisions, but my next improvement was to make uh, a ship using scripts, using these missiles, and they would use cameras like these ones, to lock onto anything that was in front of them. So if there was a ship or an asteroid or something, they would lock on and relay the GPS position of the lock to the missile. And the missile would set, using a remote control, a waypoint, and it would fly directly to the waypoint. So if you detected a target, you would lock onto it and release a missile, and it would fly to that GPS point no matter which direction your craft was facing. Uh, and that was okay for slow-moving ships, and for stations and things like that. Uh, now these are ion propelled missiles so they, they cannot sustain themselves in planetary gravity. They have, well they do have a few thrusters in uh, all the other, other directions but not enough to support themselves as I said in planetary gravity. You do not want to launch these things on Earth. Uh, I think maybe they'll work kind of okay on the moon in 0.25 G's, wherever the moon went. But in space is the best environment to use these. And like I said, those missiles worked really well for targets that were stationary or really slow moving. But then I had the fantastic idea, if I can, uh, let's get out of that and delete this one. I had the fantastically genius idea to make a missile that not only locks onto a GPS position, but it also uses the target's speed 
and the flight time of the missile to calculate where the target would be at a certain moment in time. And so these are constant velocity missiles. These missiles will track targets moving at a well, constant velocity, which also means that if the target ship changes their acceleration in any way, moves in a different direction, their velocity slows down, speeds up, uh, the missile will not hit the target. You'll need to reacquire uh, with the fighter the ship that you were locked onto. So getting a lock every few seconds usually takes care of this issue, or if the target does not change direction, you can just lock it once, let them go, and I will demonstrate this. Uh, let me go to here. Actually, let me let me do this. Let me do this. Let's uh, spectator mode. I'm gonna grab a target vessel. Uh, the Odyssey. No, nope, not no pistons. Although that is the version I typically use. We want to use dampeners off. Okay, so we're gonna just set a target moving at a constant velocity. I don't want to make it go too fast because I don't trust my design skills that much. But that's pretty darn quick. Okay, let's do this. I'm not going to explain any of the controls right now. I'm just going to get the system heated up. Let's get moving slightly. Okay, camera is on. That button should have locked us on target. We are locked. Broadcasting coordinates. Arming missile. Firing. I'm hoping it hits. Now let us watch. Firing at a target moving perpendicular is typically pretty difficult. But it is chasing it. And it did hit. Now the reason why there wasn't some earth shattering kaboom is because the sensors on the missile are- ooh, it is really going now off into deep space, the next solar system. The reason why it didn't explode is because the sensors on the missile, uh, they detect neutral and enemy targets, maybe even friendly targets, but not its owners, grids. So they won't explode on the wings of this ship. Now, if I do this, let's delete this. Actually, let's just copy this version of the Odyssey. Move it back. Okay, so that's doing a thing. Let's go... Here, with my character, I hope, okay, this is fine. We are going to set it to be controlled by the... Uh, select all... Transfer to space pirates. Okay. Alright, now where is it? It is there. My ship is here. Let's go back to the strike craft. Let's try that again. Strike craft. We need to get a new lock. Slightly move our ships so we don't glitch out. That is a problem in Space Engineers. Okay, and we have a lock. We should target it's locked. We're still broadcasting. Let's launch missile number whatever the heck. Four. Four is away. Now it is my hope that this time the sensor will detonate within five meters, maybe it's ten meters, of the target ship. It's going to have to catch up to it though. Oh, actually, not that bad, I think. It's closing. There we go, nice explosion, hit the side. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get behind the ship. I'll have to get a new lock because that missile bumped the ship slightly off course. Okay, and we should be, should be slowing down. Okie dokie. All right, camera. Let's look at that. Looks like we still have a lock. Or we have a new lock. Let's turn on our dampeners. Missile number two. Let's point it this way. And look, it adjusts course. This one should have less trouble lining up with the target. Let's just watch from a distance. As it gets closer, it should adjust more and more. Also depending upon the missile's speed. 
Now it is not going to, this missile does not work well for small ships like fighters, but as you can see, for larger vessels like cruisers... Eh? Oh, there we go, there was a hit. Damage. And we lost their GPS signal. We must have hit the antenna. So let's figure out where they went. So we are facing this direction, meaning that it's right here. So there is the damage, the full fury from the missile impacting head-on. Nice chunk taken out of the ship. And now I'm going to cheat and just teleport my vessel to here. And we are going to hopefully get a lock on the front of the ship. Okay, we have lock. Which missile's left? Missile number three, so that is five and six. Missile armed, missile away. And we are still broadcasting. Okay. Let's hope this works. Now, because these are constant velocity missiles and they aren't self-tracking and self-targeting, I don't really use them in battle as a rule because most ships are pretty darn nimble. But they are cool. They are cool. Okay, so let me explain to you how this works. Uh, let's... hold on. Let's just delete everything. Delete all the things. Entity list. Select all. Actually, let's uh, take a look at if, well, what the damage was from that. I don't think we did too much damage there. No, we did. Wow, look at that. We hit the side. Actually, looks like. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, now we're going to select everything and remove it. And we can get into all the fun details. So that is the J72 Mark II Velocity, etc. I also have one with the jump drive for jumping places. Okie dokie. Here it is. Alright, so as you can observe, we have, if I can count, five cameras in the nose. Uh, the main camera it aims with actually is this one. If this one doesn't pick anything up, then uh, this camera kicks in, then this camera, then this camera, I think, then this camera. And they're all at uh, either one or two degree angles uh, from center. So if the target is not directly in the line of center and you're still hoping to target something, you want the cameras to detect something, all of those will kick in and it might not be that accurate, you might just be targeting the very edge of, of a, a ship, but at least it will be locked on to something moving. Okay, uh, and we have the missiles here, which are... Every bit of these things uh, is very complex. There is no internal armor. Everything has been replaced with the, the programming block, timer blocks, a lot of timer blocks. Okay, so what happens is first... Let me go through the controls. So here we have the central camera to view through. I could put the rest of the cameras in here too, but usually this one just works just fine. And this is the, the first one that the program uses. Uh, then we have the timer block, which triggers the program, which turns on the cameras and has them look for a target. Uh, if a target is detected, that data will be stored. And then I hit button three which uses the ship's antenna to transmit all of the relevant important information to the missile. And actually, if I step out of my cockpit here and grab a, let's see, receiver, I can show you exactly what that would look like. Okie dokie, let's do this. Bring it down a little bit. There we go. So this piece of machinery I cobbled together out of a block, a battery, an antenna, a display, and a programming block will receive all the information that is transmitted by the fighter and will display it on this screen. So if I turn on my targeting systems and I'm looking at the receiver and press target, target is locked, and now if I press button three, we are transmitting. 
So let me show you exactly what this data is. So here is just everything in one long string goes right off the screen. Uh, and here is what the actual information is. So this this is pretty much how it works in my missiles as well. It separates the information by the colons in the data. So we have GPS, then we have the number of seconds since the target was acquired. Then we have the target's absolute velocity, which is zero. So if it's moving in any direction at any number of meters per second, that is the number that would show up here, just one number. Then we have the velocity in the X, Y, and Z. Then we have the X, Y, and Z GPS coordinates, and then we just have an extra space here because there was a semicolon at the very end of the string. That is that is how that works. Let me actually go into, let's see, timer display. This is cool. So what happens is I transmit this information to the missile. The missile takes all this data in, calculates where the target should be based on the flight time and its velocity, and then moves to where the target should be. Uh, but there is some lag time in the way my missiles work, so it actually overcompensates. So if it's supposed to only calculate 10 meters ahead, it might go 15. So it'll meet the target where it will be by the time it reaches it, if that makes any kind of sense. And the reason for that is because my missiles are inefficient. I mentioned that already. Uh, the guidance is on half the time. The thrusters are on half the time. It alternates every second. So one second thruster, one second guidance, because the issue I was running into was that when I would keep the guidance systems running the entire time, it would delete waypoints and add waypoints and delete waypoints and add waypoints, and it wouldn't know which waypoint to go to, because as soon as it had a waypoint to set its guidance systems towards, it would be replaced with a new one. And that could either be fixed by A, constantly adding new waypoints and at the same time switching over to them and just making this really huge list of waypoints in the missile's remote control which would take up space and processing power and I didn't know if I would crash the game doing that or I could have it do a bunch of calculations for the second the thrusters are off and then engage the thrusters turn off the calculations whatever waypoint was last entered into the targeting system, it would fly towards it, and then the cycle would repeat and repeat and repeat. So it's not the most accurate thing, but it's decently accurate. That's why you saw the thrusters pulsating when I was firing at my uh, Odyssey ship. What was I going to do? The timer, yes. The timer is one of my more ingenious uh, ideas. Actually, it's probably not my idea at all, but I did not look for help when coming up with it. Now, which, which panel is it? I know I have it stashed in here. Is it this one? Might be that one. Might be that one. Let's, uh... I think that's it. Okay. Timer. Timer display. Okie dokie. Let's change that to text and images. Now... What number are we reading here? 225 seconds. If we look, that same number should be right here. So the information for the flight timer is coming from this LCD paired with the timer programming block. And what happens is I use the timer programming block and I have it set so that it keeps track of how many seconds have elapsed since the last time it was triggered. And I believe I have it set to trigger every 10 game ticks. So if we go to timer... Yeah, every 10 game ticks, it'll engage this timer block, and then it will send however long the time since it was last active to the d display monitor, and then add the time on the display monitor to the time that just elapsed to keep track of how many seconds have elapsed since it was first activated. And then I have another programming block which wipes the slate clean. It just constantly sets the display to zero. But the, the timer is always active, it's just not able to update the display unless I tell it. So we've gone over how the timer works, we've gone over the basic calculation of how the math works, let's get into the cool programming part, and for those of you who have no interest in this, it's gonna be boring. It's gonna be really boring. Uh, but for those of you who think this is kinda cool, 
like me, because I'm, I'm a complete nerd, uh, this is really cool stuff. So let's look at the first programming block that activates. That's going to be the targeting... That's not how you spell targeting. Target computer. Here it is. Here it is. The lock target button triggers the target computer and a few other crazy shenanigans. Okay. So we have instructions here on how to use it. I will put this machine, this vehicle, on the workshop. And if you want, you could put these scripts into your own ships as well. So we have five cameras. We need all of these blocks. Uh, I still need to revise the scripts slightly. I've noticed some things since I completed them that are just redundant and not needed. So this one triggers normally. Okay, we have all kinds of crazy things. All the cameras. All the timers. We have a remote control block called target storage. And that is... That is how I'm storing all this information. So I'm storing the target's GPS coordinates. Actually, if I go to my, let's see, target storage. Yeah, so I have, this is pretty cool. I have all the target's data, its velocity and stuff, stored in the name of the waypoint. Now this, yeah, look at that. We have the GPS points here. And then it is sent to, let me skip ahead. Let's go to the... Train broadcast broadcast computer. So yeah, here's where I encode all of the data. So we take the GPS position from the target storage, we combine it with all the other information, and we eventually send it out as a bunch of tokens in a string. So we have timer data, we have velocity, we have velocity in every direction, uh, and then we send it way down here. All kinds of fun, cool stuff. Let's go back to the target computer so I can actually explain how this works. I'm not going to give a tutorial. Otherwise, this video, which will probably already be like an hour, uh, will be two hours, and that's no fun. Although, if you would like me to give a tutorial on programming in Space Engineers, that is something I would look into. I haven't touched it in a while, so I'm a little rusty, but this stuff does interest me. Okay, so immediately, uh, we declare some things, all of the blocks that we need. The grid terminal system is the ship. So this keeps track of all the blocks in the ship. Uh, we get the block named Camera Center as, as a camera, Camera Up as a camera, we get the target display, which is this LCD over here, as a text panel, etc, 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 etc. We grab all the timers we need. Um, we have a programmable block named Timer, and a programmable block named Timer Reset. Uh, let's see, Timer Display, Target Storage is the remote control. We declare some vectors here which will keep track of the target's velocity and GPS. And the cool thing, you see this Boolean value here saying GPS only. I have a bunch of... what's the best way to describe this? Well, in computer talk, it's exceptions. Um, and those make the program more robust and uh, less prone to failure. So if any part of this system, like the timer system, is damaged, but it still has the GPS coordinates of the target, it will engage GPS-only mode, meaning that it'll be like my earlier version of the missiles, which only traveled to a GPS point. So the missiles will still fire, and they will travel only to a designated GPS point. They will not do velocity tracking because that system is damaged and they would be wildly inaccurate. So that was a redundant, not really redundant, but a, a, a backup feature I added to make the program more durable and robust. Okay, so, waypoint info, detected entity info, so this will, this is what I'm eventually going to send to my remote control blocks. Uh, this tells you all the information from the target detected by the cameras, and the camera information will give you all of the relevant data, like the GPS and the velocity. So now for the actual program part. If you didn't understand any of that, I will explain it all here. So first we have a bunch of boolean values for the center camera, up camera, down camera, left camera, right camera, and we set them all to be true. And if they are true, then the program can use them. However, if... let's see... here we go. So yeah, so if we try to enable the ray casting system on a camera, which is what uh, sends out sort of a, a, a beam, if you will, to a target, and that's how it locks onto targets. If we enable that system and it doesn't work, I set the camera to false, meaning that this camera is damaged, we're going to have to use the next one. And it goes down the line checking all the cameras to see if they'll work. And if 
The camera works, so if center active and has target, or and not has target, it will engage the ray casting program on the camera, and it will look for a target with that camera, and if targets are not found, it'll cycle through each camera until a target is found. If no target is found, then, well, no target is found and nothing happens. Uh, let's see. If a target is found, you can see we, uh, the has target is equal to true. So if any of the cameras picked up a target, so if they now have a target, the target's position, its GPS position, is stored in target pause, or position. Uh, the target's velocity is stored in the target velocity. And here we break down the target's velocity into its x, y, and z components and store them in separate variables, x, y, and z. We start encoding the data using our semi or using our, our colons. So we have x velocity, y velocity, and z velocity. We name that string velocity, and then we name the target's name velocity. And the target name is going to be the target waypoint's name, which is stored in target storage. So our receiver's velocity is 000, zero, zero and its position is 589.68, negative 94551, and 18294. So that is how that works. So I'm using remote controls to store all this information. Let's go back to the target computer. So we have a target. We are storing the data. If there is already a waypoint in the remote control, we clear it out and add the new one. And if the remote control doesn't work, we say, oh, this thing is offline. Uh, and if this doesn't work, then all well, the display is destroyed. And that just goes to the terminal, not to any display. Now we check to see if the timers are functional. If the timers are not functional, then the GPS or then the timer system is damaged, and we enable GPS only mode. Uh, and then we write here GPS only. If GPS only mode is not enabled, then we just display target locked like normal, which is what we have here. Everything is working the way it should, and we are still counting up. We are still at, what are we at now? How many seconds? 976 seconds. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, target computer, let's go back. Anything else that happens here? No, nothing. Okay. So we've gone over the rudimentary basics on how the targeting system gets its target, where it stores the information. Now, how does it send it to the missile? Well, we have another program for that. I wrote all of these, by the way. Last time this was updated was 2019, 21st of December. Did I update the targeting computer that time, too? I also have a readme file. Uh, this was the 6th of December. Okay, so I haven't touched this for a while. Uh, okay, I also have a readme file that I wrote for someone because they wanted to implement this in their ship. Uh, and so I might... I don't know if I can attach that to the Steam Workshop, but I'll figure something out eventually. Okay, so this is what happens to send all the information to the missile. Uh, I think that... Let's see. Program block, yada, yada, yada. I think that... This is a redundant piece of code. I don't think I actually need this, but it's not hurting anyone, so I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'll experiment with that later. Like I said before, there are some things I want to update in this code. And they recently broke the, the scripts, and I had to go back and rewrite a few things. Okay, so this is Guidance Transmission version 1.2, written by myself. Uh, this one runs every 10 ticks, and well, that's so it will constantly send information to the missile. I believe there, in this game, 60 ticks in a second. I think that's the, uh, the ratio. Okay, so let's go to the program. We have remote controls. We have a list of waypoints. We have the timer uh, display. We uh, Do we have the timer itself? No, I guess we don't. we're just using the timer display here. Uh, we have target data, a name, program. Okay, yeah, here's the timer computer right here. And the timer reset computer. All right, so the first thing that happens is we look at the remote control we try to see if it has any targets stored in it. If this action fails, meaning that the remote control has been destroyed or damaged somehow, uh, well, it says that it's destroyed, and it will return and end the program here. So it'll just quit. Uh, if the target count is greater than zero, 
First of all, we check to see if the timer computer is working, if the timer reset computer is working, if the timer display is working, and if all of those things are working just fine. Then we look at the timer display, and we grab whatever time value is there, however many seconds have passed, and we set that to timer data. Okay. And if all kinds of things failed, then, well, timer system's offline, we set it to GPS missiles only, that's the way it goes. We configure everything for GPS targeting. And then we quit the, the program again. If, if everything is working fine, if the timer is working okay, then okay, target data is equal to targets zero dot two string, so it'll take whatever is in the target storage and just convert that to a string, then we'll split it into tokens. So we'll split it into smaller strings separated by the colons. And then we convert the timer data to a double. The next step here is to take the velocity data from the target storage, the x, y, and z velocity data, and convert it back into a vector. And from there, we also take those values and find the target's absolute velocity. Then we set the name of the uh, waypoint we're going to transmit, so it's equal to the seconds plus the absolute velocity plus the velocity in the x, y, and z. And then finally, we send the target position, which was also stored in the target storage remote control. And then finally we create the waypoint, and we transmit the waypoint to our missile. Now, I said we transmit. We don't actually, this isn't the command to transmit. That means that we go down to here, to the, to the transmit function. And this is the code that I think we don't need. Um, antenna, I don't think I use it. Oh no, we do. Okay, we make sure the antenna is functional. That makes sense. I'm going to remember to leave that in. We need that thing. Okay, good, good. So, we have our antenna, we have a programmable block, and we have our display. So, the programmable block is functional. Uh, that means everything's okay. We also check if the display is okay. Uh, however, if the antenna is not functional, then we'll, just, we'll write no signal here. So, that means that can't send anything to the missile. So, that means no GPS tracking. That means no velocity tracking. That means all you have are unguided missiles, so we're back to the very, very first version of this ship, which you just launch things at a direction. Which still works to destroy stuff, but it, it's, it's a little more difficult. So finally, in order to transmit all this data to the receiver on the missile, we have something called a tag. And that tag is sort of like an ID code for the transmission. So the missile is going to be searching for a transmission with the tag guidance, and we are going to be sending a transmission with the tag guidance. So, inner grid communication system dot send broadcast message, which is, let's see, I believe it is going to be, yeah, right here. So we have our tag guidance and then the target dot two string. So the waypoint that we sent into this function, target, my waypoint info target, we're going to convert that to a string which has all of the colons and send that to our missile at the maximum transmission distance for this antenna and the default value I think I said was what 15,000 meters so 15 kilometers but it, whatever the antenna is at you can set it as far as you want however the only thing is the target computer for this craft I believe I set the distance for the ray casting so the locking on targets to only 10 kilometers so yeah I wouldn't mess with these distances okie dokie so now it is sent, and that is what that over there receives. That is what the receiver is getting. If you're able to follow all of that craziness, that's what's happening here. Also, I did have to respawn this in. So that's why we went from 900 and some seconds back down to 428. Or actually, I didn't respawn it in, but I, I relocked the target because I was testing something before I opened my mouth and sounded stupid. Uh, fortunately, I, I was correct, so I would have been correct anyway. Okay. Uh, as far as the missile, the actual missile, the meat of the, of this weapon system, let's, let's release one. So let's release missile two, or actually it's missile one, I can't count. Okay, so we have a sensor here, we have a sensor over here, the sensor down here tells the warheads, oh, it's time to explode. Uh, and we have a bunch of timer blocks. This sensor just lets the missile know, hey, I've disconnected, time to engage engines. Okay, hopefully I can do a better job of explaining this than I did the broadcast system because I know that sounded confusing. I hadn't looked at it in a while. So here is the 
target computer or the, the, the flight guidance computer for the missile. I think it is called guidance computer. Yeah, guidance computer one. All of these missiles are coated with, um, not coated, but coated with the, the number that they are. So everything here has a one after it, everything here has a two after it. And that's so when, actually it's mainly so that when you arm a missile on the ship, instead of arming just one missile, it might accidentally, if they weren't coded, arm all of them. And that wouldn't be very good. So I have them all separate, which kind of makes them difficult to be interchangeable. But at the same time, you can just paste new blueprints of these on. So I will have both the ship and the missiles on the workshop. And these are reloadable because the ship uses the, the groups to arm and fire the missiles, not the, the blocks themselves. So you can just reload and fire and reload and fire. Okay, as to explaining how all of this works, let's, uh, let's turn this thing on. Let's see. Guidance computer on. Okay. Okie dokie. Edit. All right, so missile one receiver version 1.2. Again, the last time I updated this was the 21st of December. And we have a receiver on here to receive the messages. We have a variable here to store whatever message comes in. And we have the tag again called guidance. So that lets the missile know, hey, I'm looking for a transmission called guidance. So if the receiver has a message coming in, so if it matches that tag, it'll say, oh, the message, which was the message here, is equal to the receiver dot accept message. So that calls the accept message function for the receiver. It'll bring in whatever that string is. Uh, I also declare variables for distance and time and absolute velocity. We have our message string is equal to the message dot data dot to string. So here is where we bring in that message and we put it into a string. And here's when we split it apart by its colons. Not colons, the organ, but colons, colons, colons. There they are. One's there. And that is when it does all of this. It breaks it apart into the time and velocity and GPS and all that fun shenanigans. So we split it apart. We break everything down back into vectors and numbers and doubles and floats and things. We find the absolute velocity. And also, I just wanted to go back to my broadcast computer here. If you didn't catch this when you were looking, because I don't think I explained it. Absolute velocity is equal to the square root of the x velocity squared plus the y velocity squared plus the z velocity squared. Just a fun fact. And that's where that data comes from. Okay, back to guidance computer. First thing, after we break all these values back down into data that we can use. We grab the target position and we add to it the target's velocity in that direction. So here the x position that we're gonna aim for is equal to the target's velocity in the x times the time since the target was detected. Uh, and we do that for all three of these directions. Also, we measure the distance from the target to the missile. And here is when I did some number stuff. So here's where I, I had to calibrate the, the program for this missile. It's not the most maneuverable thing. It's not the most accurate, as I've said. So I had to just kind of do a lot of trial and error to find out how to fine tune these calculations for this specific missile to hit. So if the distance is greater than two kilometers, I add 30 to the time value. So we lead it by a whole bunch if we're more than two kilometers out. If it closes to well, if it's less than two kilometers and greater than 500 meters, we only lead it by 10 seconds. Then we check the ship's speed. So we, in this case, the missile speed. We check to see if it's greater than 100, we add four seconds, and we continue down doing these fine tuning adjustments, which again, I did with trial and error to get this thing to be on target as many times as possible. And I think that this, this whole thing is a pretty good calculation uh, for this missile. I don't know if other missiles will respond this way, um, but it works for this one. And you guys have already seen that several times. I've already fired them. You guys have watched. Okay, we finally set our final details for our aiming position. We create a new waypoint with, well, the name, which, what is the name? Just target and with the aiming position we're going to aim at. And then we clear whatever waypoint was previously in there. And we set our new target waypoint, and off goes the missile targeting stuff. So in that case, let me 
Uh, what, what is the right button? Let's try, let, let's try this one. Let's see, let's see what this does. Okay, so this wasn't the one that engages the thrusters. This is the one that I wanted. So this toggles the remote control autopilot and the uh, guidance computer on and off because like I said, while the guidance computer is running, it is constantly clearing waypoints and adding new ones. So the missile has no idea which one to go to because as soon as it has a waypoint, it's gone again. And that's why on its calculating, off the thrusters are on and it's moving towards the waypoint. On its calculating again, off it moves towards the waypoint and thrusters are on and so it, it pulses towards the target. So it might work best if you had some speed to begin with when you release the missiles, but it also, from a standstill about a kilometer and a half away, you can hit a target. Okay, uh, do not use these to attack other fighters. They are sadly not accurate enough, unless the target's not moving. Uh, but as you saw, larger ships like the Odyssey, which isn't that big, uh, it can hit. It can hit them. And stations, no problem. They're not moving at all. So that is... Uh, in one long, complicated, hard-to-follow explanation and presentation, how I designed my guided missiles. If you guys want more details, uh, I can make more videos on how C-Sharp works. It, it reminds me a lot of Java. That's what I was currently working with at the time I was working on these missiles. And I like Java a lot. And another thing about Space Engineer scripting is for things like this, I did not have to write my own objects or classes, if you guys know what that means. Uh, I just used the functions and the objects that were already available to me in Space Engineers. Okay, well I think I have rambled on enough about my ship. I will have this up on the workshop with instructions on how to use it. I'll quickly just talk about it again. So we go here, uh, button one is the camera. Button two, you're gonna wanna hit button two twice, so the first time Okay, the first time you you hit it, it will activate the targeting program and it will turn on the camera's ability to detect targets. You want to wait a few seconds because the the range that it can detect targets recharges each time it does a raycasting uh, process. So the first time you can raycast pretty far out, but if you hit it one second later, it only raycasts at a distance of, I don't know, two kilometers or something. And if you spam the button a whole bunch of times, uh, you're going to get zero. You're gonna get maybe not enough time, but you're gonna eventually get pretty much no distance. In this case though, uh, that's not a problem because our target's so close, I guess, but trust me, you need to wait for it to recharge if you're shooting at targets that are pretty far out. Uh, so that's the only problem with ray casting. That's why you see in Space Engineers ships that have like self-targeting missiles they have a whole bunch of cameras, and they're usually large grids. They're usually large missiles, not not small grid missiles like this. Um, they usually have a lot of cameras on them, so they can constantly go through them and engage each raycasting one, and then cycle again through them. Um, but I did not have enough space on these missiles uh, for enough cameras. I thought about putting a camera on the front of them, but it just it wouldn't really contribute that much. And uh, I think this is the best way for this system to work in its present condition. So you hit 2 to lock a target, you hit button 3, turn it on to transmit to the receiver on the missile, which inside does a lot of this stuff. If we, hold on, let me do something cool. Turn it this way, and there we go, it's moving at 1.6 meters per second. Let's show you guys what this looks like. Okay, target is locked. It takes one second to lock a target. I have it set on a one second delay. I do not recall what the reason was, but I had a good reason for it. It's been too long. Um, and now you can see we do have velocity values filling here. Our absolute velocity is 1.5937, etc, etc, etc. Our X, Y, and Z velocities are 1.1, 1.0, and 0.3. And here we have our X, Y, and Z GPS positions, and that is what the missile receives. To actually launch a missile, you hit button... Well, the timer blocks are the arming systems for the missile. So here we have button 7, turns on the missile's antenna, and activates all the fun stuff. Let's take a look at it. The sound block goes for, I think, 15 seconds. I'll probably cut that shorter. Kind of annoying. 
but I wanted to have some sort of audio feedback so I'd know, hey, I pushed a button, but also the, uh, the antenna lets me know that too. Okay, so here we have the guidance computer on, and hopefully this hits. I mean, that's only three blocks wide, so I, I, I don't know what's gonna hit. I genuinely cannot tell you, but we can try. We are broadcasting. Missile away. Not that fast. Gone. Vaporized. Perfect. Okay. Well, I think that finally sums it up. For those of you who stuck around to the end, I applaud you for your patience. I know that I wouldn't have enough patience. Especially this is something that you've never looked at before or experimented with. It, uh, it, it's a lot to, to take in. But I was able to do it, and it works, and I am darn proud of it. So, if you guys enjoyed this Space Engineers video, please be sure to leave the video a like. Uh, and if you want to see more, well then please subscribe, because there's always more Space Engineers on this channel. Well, I guess not always, but quite often. Because it is such a cool game. If you want to download this craft, like I said, I will have it on the workshop. The links will be in the description whenever I get the video up. I don't know how long that'll take, because I have a lot of editing to do to cut out all of my rambling and getting off topic and just rampant stupidity. If for whatever reason you guys did not enjoy the video, I do apologize for that. It was probably because I talked too much and there wasn't a lot of action. I'm sorry, I know this is mainly a Star Trek Legacy channel, but this is cool. This is my, my, my field of study. Uh, just to clarify though, my field of study is not designing weapon systems, but it is studying programming and software. And uh, I find it really interesting. So, if there's any way I can improve my videos, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section about that. Uh, I don't know really what I can do, but yeah, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day, and maybe I piqued your interest in programming, because uh, I think it's really neat stuff. So as always, I am Foxtrot Delta, and I will see you next time.